Thanks for staying with us. When searching for a way to perfectly define selfishness, I stumbled on three different definitions. One, concern excessively or exclusively with oneself. Two, seeking or concentrating on one's own advantage, pleasure, or well-being without regard for others. And three, arising from concern with one's own welfare advantage in the disregard of others. So, is it productive or problematic? Now, what is particularly interesting about these terms is that they are not mutually exclusive. While it is very simple to declare selfishness as wrong because it's immoral and unkind, it's a bit harder to declare it as unproductive. So can selfishness be productive and problematic? Or must it be one or the other? Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663 and follow us on all our social media platforms. So can selfishness be productive and problematic? Or does it have to be one or the other? I think this is a very controversial topic. Mm. Many people have many opinions on this, but I think it's one or the other. One or the other? Yeah. Why do you say so? Sometimes it can be productive, sometimes it can be problem. I don't think it can be the same at the same time. Really? I don't think you can have both at the same time. Hmm. So then, if, what about like an instance where like, um, you are doing something that is protecting your own peace, and that might be controversial amongst other people, but then it is technically productive because it's aiding your own growth personally. So it's helping you grow, it's helping you achieve more for yourself, but then it's disregarding other people if you get what i mean that's true i think that falls under the category of neutral selfishness mm-hmm. so neutral selfishness is more or less like you known as just like common sense <laughs> 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 okay. yeah elaborate so it's obviously not hurting anyone in, like it's not directly hurting anyone mm-hmm. and it's benefiting you and i feel like doing something that will aid you but like it's not directly harming anyone but people might have opinions on it it's mm. like neutral it's not really bad it's quite productive i think yeah i feel like it falls under the category of productivity mm. like produ- so are you guys saying that it can't be productive and problematic i think selfishness is more productive than problematic but it's like it can be problematic as well huh. okay so i think now we need to like go into your definition of selfishness in itself because is, do you just think that putting yourself first is selfishness or to fully define selfishness, do you think that you have to disregard other people or bring other people down to be selfish? The latter. Mm-hmm. I feel like selfishness is when you act without considering other people's feelings. Mm. Okay, so I feel like that definition definitely gives us some guidance. Is what do you think? Selfishness can be both productive and problematic at the same time. Mm. Because, for example, let's say, let's say it's the night before an exam, a big exam, mm-hmm. and you're in the middle of studying, and then a close friend comes to you and is like, "Oh, please come and explain this concept to me." You, you're trying to think about how you're going to organize your own time to study for yourself, and you want to prioritize yourself in that way. But then your friend is asking you for help. And by turning them down, you're like going to like negatively impact them. Exactly. So in that way, that might be deemed as problematic to other people. But you're putting yourself first, you're prioritizing your own needs. So then that is also productive for you. So it really just varies on the situation. I think it can be both at the same time. Hmm. 100%. Okay, so I'm going to ask a question that might stir the pot a bit. Let's look at it in terms of picking your own career choice. So, for instance, your parents pay for your school fees, right? They put you through school and then you get to, you're applying to universities now. And then you're like, okay, this whole time I said I wanted to study medicine. But then now I've suddenly realized that I'm an arts kid, you know, I want to do media and production, you know? And then your parents are like, no, I've put all this money down and you're going to do medicine because it ensures your success and you're going to be able to, you know, you basically owe us that. So would it be selfish for you to put your own passion and your own dreams ahead of what your parents want for you? Or would it just be you putting yourself first? I think it depends on um it depends on your intentions really. I think it's productive. I don't think that it's um selfish for you to um pursue what you want to pursue. Like disregarding your parents' feelings. Cause like your career is yours. 
Yeah, but then they paid money now. They yeah, paid, yeah they, they paid to school. Yeah, I understand they paid money and yeah. stuff. But then it depends, like, if you're going into, like, a career that they don't believe will make you a lot of money. It depends what you're going into that career to do. Because you can't go into that career to, like, completely take over the whole business and even make more money than the career they wanted you to go into before. Yeah, I feel like it depends on your point of view. Because mm -hmm. from your parents' point of view, that's selfishness. Yeah. Because med school is a lot. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot of money. true. So it would be selfish, but like when you look at it, like it's your life. And then yeah. it's you that has to write the exams, it's you that has to study, it's you that has to do this profession when you don't have a passion. Yeah. And it is, it's your life, but then would you have been able to get to that informed position where you could even take charge and decide what you wanted to do if you weren't given these opportunities by your parents in the first place? So, for instance, I would say I want to do law, like, all through um, secondary school. My parents put me through secondary school, send me to A-levels, I get to uni, and I say that, oh, yeah, I'm going to study law, and they've spent all of that money. But then, because my parents have given me a lot of exposure, and I've been exposed to a lot of different things, I realize that I'm actually more interested in, let's say, social media management, right? And they don't believe in that. But then would I have even been able to come to that conclusion if I didn't get the exposure that they gave me? Do you get what I mean? Okay, so yeah, yeah, that could be selfish now that I think about it. It could be selfish, yeah. but is it wrong I for you to put yourself first in that situation? Yeah, it could. Wait, uh, I don't think it's wrong because it's your life. It is <laughs> your life. It's I mean, it may be hurting your parents and stuff, but you could just have a like, nice little conversation. Yeah, <laughs> they'll get over it. <laughs> they'll get over it. This is what do you think? Okay, so... I think my opinion might be a little bit controversial, but then I feel like it's not selfish because if you think about it, this isn't just, it's not just that going to say, oh, just go to med school for eight, 10 years. You're going to, you go to med school, you do all the exams, then you'll be a doctor for the rest of your life. So it's not even as if you're just like letting them have this one thing. Mm. You're literally um, devoting your future to something that you have zero passion in. And if that's something that you do and you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life, just because your parents invested in you while you were growing up. Because I do think that that's your, like, a parent's job. Their job <laughs> is to invest and support that child. <laughs> so I don't think you then owe them your whole career and adult life solely because they invested in your childhood and your education. I think they should support you. They should give you guidance and you should reason with them and listen to their guidance and their perspective because obviously they'll have a more mature perspective. And definitely from like a financial um, view as well. But I think that at the, the, at the end of the day, let's say you go to university at 18. So from 18 until death, you're going to do something that you don't enjoy simply because from the age of 0 to 18, your parents were taking care of you. I don't think that's like the same. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, but to add something, it de really depends because if it was you that was telling your parents that this is what I want to study, and can you please help me pay for this because this is what I'm going to study. And you're the ones like telling them this is what you want to do. And then later on, after they've paid for all of this, you're now changing what you want to do, saying that, oh, no, I might think I have a, an interest in this. That becomes selfish. But if they want, they're the ones imposing the career on you from the start and paying for the things like you don't want to do in the first place. Mm. But then you now find it standing your ground and saying, I want to do this. That okay, but then after you now stand your ground and you say, I want to do this, and you say, I want to go to film school, who will now pay for that film school? Ah, they will still pay. Ah, ah, pardon? Ha, they will still pay. <laughs> they will still pay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So they will, send, they will send you to med school. That's what they wanted you to do. They wanted you to be a doctor. You said, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I found my dream. And then they'll pay for you to go into what you want. Yeah. Now, that isn't necessarily negative. But would you call it selfish? Is it said that it's not selfish? Do you think it's selfish, you guys? I think it's not i don't think it's selfish you don't think it's selfish i don't think it's i mean in terms of the spending money parts mm -hmm. then it's selfish but, but then like, in terms of putting yourself first, first then i feel like it's your life at the end of the day you need to stand your truth you need to stand your ground okay you need to follow your passion i mean i understand that okay so we actually have a comment so it says oh wait i'm so sorry i cannot see this right now Let's get back to the conversation. So I completely understand what we mean in that case, but I guess this has just introduced us to the way, the ways in which selfishness could be mistaken for putting yourself first, yeah. right? So I guess putting yourself first might be what we're calling positive selfishness. 
So in the sense where we're like, oh, um, positive selfishness is where we are taking some time for ourselves, just at the disadvantage of other people, blah, 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 blah. Maybe <laughs> the disadvantage isn't as prominent as we think. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just like a very minor, you know, it's not really affecting them very badly. For instance, this example that we gave about parents, they might not necessarily be disadvantaged, but you might get them disappointed and they might feel like they wasted the money. But as you guys have explained, that might just be an investment into a different course where you would thrive more, you'd be more successful and you would make them even more proud. Or what do you guys think? Yeah, 100% agree with you. Yes, I agree with that. I agree, yeah. Hmm. And I think parents should, like, I think their job is to support their child and guide their child. So I think in that respect, that they can definitely give their own opinion and their advice but then i think ultimately it's left to the child to make their own decision and speak for themselves rather than like doom themselves to a life of misery okay thank you Ziz. so we have a comment now it says you ladies have definitely made me laugh today <laughs> we're really glad <laughs> i think selfishness can be productive at times if you are selfish with your time because you have bigger responsibilities then the recipient of the selfishness might be able to hurt, but only you would be able to justify it. I think I, I agree with that. I mean, the recipient of the selfishness might be able to hurt. I think this is very like this is very much like what Isney was talking about, yeah. like with the studying thing, where it might hurt, but then sometimes you just need to put yourself first. Yeah. I think there's this thing that my mom used to say where it's like some you shouldn't just always be available, but sometimes you should be able to set boundaries. Like, yeah. so for instance, if you have like your daily schedule, let's say you're generally just a very disorganized person sometimes. And then, you know, one day you wake up and you're like, I'm going to have, I'm going to romanticize my life. You know, I'm going to draw up my schedule. I'm going to have a picnic today. I'm going to study today. I'm going to read a book. And then you just get a call from one of your friends. that's like, oh, let's go out today. And you're just, and because this friend called you now, you're just going to completely disrespect your schedule, disrespect the time that you put in there and let them disrespect your time. And then you, that same person, sometime you could call that same friend and another day could we go out and they'd be like, I'm so sorry, but I have something I'm doing now. So I think selfishness, is also, it can also be a way in which you're protecting your peace and allowing other people to respect certain aspects of your livelihood. Or what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree as well. Hmm. Okay, so that was a really insightful comment, and I think it goes hand in hand with everything that we've been speaking about today. But let's talk about the negative aspects of selfishness, because I don't want anybody to come and start saying that, listen, everybody has started saying, <laughs> let's be peace. selfish and say, I'm protecting my peace. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's this negative aspect of selfishness as well. But yeah, I think we have another comment now. Um, Okay, parents are co-pilots and should only guide when it comes to career choice. The finance part, in my opinion, is the parents' responsibility. What do you guys think oh, about that? Okay, that's a very refreshing perspective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope this is how all parents think about it. But yeah, parents yeah. are yeah. co-pilots. I like that term. We're all yeah. working together. Yeah. Yeah. Even in terms of like this whole university, selecting universities and everything, we should all make this decision hand in hand, right? Yeah. So, I guess it's not selfish to take control of your life, to take control of your and future. I think the key word in this um, comment that we got was to guide, not to mm. impose. Yes. Yeah, because some parents may feel the need that, oh, I bought you, um, I'm experienced. They always, I feel like... Yeah, I've, 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 I've <laughs> been a teenager yeah, before. Yeah, I've been a teenager. Exactly. Yeah, times have exactly. Changed. And they tend to impose. But the key word here is guide. Guide, yeah. 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 I mean, obviously, this is not us disregarding the experience of parents in any way or form. Yeah. We do understand. the exp- We have so much to learn from our yeah, adults. Yeah, definitely. Um, Izine, are you still there? Yes, I am. Um, Hello. Do you have anything to say? I agree with that comment about the co-pilot. I think that, I think that's a very nice term to use, and I think it perfectly encapsulates the whole concept of being a parent mm. and the function, which is to guide and then use your own experience to help further mold a human being. Yeah, one hundred percent. 
I think it's very easy sometimes to try and live vicariously through your child, but as a parent, you're there to guide, protect, advise, be there and to love, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really love this perspective. It's very refreshing. And <laughs> I hope that all parents are thinking this way, very healthy. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly. Um, I know that I'm applying to universities now and my dad is like, he's so... He's 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 such a girl dad. First of all, he's like so, <laughs> he's such a girl dad because it's three girls and then my little brother. He's like five. Yeah. I oh know, my god. I, five. <laughs> Ignore the like that. That wasn't a question. He's five. So, <laughs> um. So it, we're a bunch of girls and like my dad is really focused on raising ambitious, you know, responsible, powerful young ladies. And so he's really invested in our futures. Um. And then, like, this whole time I had been thinking that I don't want to disappoint my dad. I need to do everything he says, everything, everything. And then we just, like, recently had this conversation that actually did end up with me, like, shedding a few tears. And it was just him giving this same refreshing point of view where he said that parents are just co-pilots and they truly just want the best of you. So sometimes the pressure might be there without it even being explicitly said. Like, taking control of the future. Yeah. Sometimes you might feel like you owe it to your parents to yeah. do this. Yeah. But they might not even have said that before and they most likely do not even think that. So they're there for us no matter what. Every teenager watching this, don't do something you don't want to do. They just your parents just want to see you thrive. They just want to see you shine. Um yeah. what do you guys think about the summer? Yeah. We we have the same parents. We do have the same parents. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um about the feeling like you owe it to them, it has been quite a problem for me as well. Throughout the whole of school. I feel like the whole beginning time of school, every time I wrote an exam or something, instead of knowing that I'm writing the exam for myself or to pass, I'm thinking, oh, I owe it to my parents, I don't want to disappoint them. Yeah. But I feel like when you stop thinking that is when you actually start to thrive because you know that it benefits you and not them. Mm. Okay. Same, same <laughs> exact experience. Same exact experience. I completely agree with what you said. Mm. Just this next stage in our lives, just thrive. There's just so much learning. If you are just tuned in, we are discussing the art of being selfish, productive, or problematic. Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation by sending us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. And because it is a special, the phone line is going to be open all week. So you can call us on 70 7749 if you call, please remember to turn down the volume of the device so we don't get any feedback. Back to the discussion. Okay, so there is a comment coming in. So this is Abby from Lagos. Hi, Abby. Um, when you put yourself first, being selfish can be beneficial, but it can also be a problem if you rob others of their own happiness equally. It could be problematic. If you decide to be selfish in the face of someone else's genuine need for your assistant, Therefore, being selfish has advantages and disadvantages, but it is recommended to always be selfless. Like the saying goes, happiness is infectious, so if you make others happy by not equally, it could be problematic. It could be problematic if you decide to be selfish in the face of someone else's genuine need for your assistance. Therefore, being selfish has advantages and disadvantages, but it, it is recommended to always be selfless. As the saying goes, happiness is infectious when you make other people happy by not being selfish, you're also bringing happiness to yourself. Mm. On, on that note, we also got another comment asking, from your experiences, wait, greeting, beautiful ladies, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> from your experiences, can our politicians be considered selfish? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you guys have like, it's, I think it's a yes or no question. What do you guys think? Yes. Kind of in capitalism. Yes. Yes, I think the answer is yes. Unanimous? I, I agree. Yes. Our politicians yeah. can be considered selfish. In very standard ways, to be honest. It's, there's no two way about it. I don't think that. <laughs> okay. Now, since we've already gotten on that note, let's start talking about the negative effects of being selfish. Um, more like we're just gesting about this while we're doing our makeup. You said something about crime rates. Yeah, I think I'll ask it this way. Somebody breaks into your house, they see your PS5, for mm -hmm. example. They want it. They take it. <laughs> Selfishness. That's somebody being selfish over there because mm. 
you feel so bad, you wake up, you just want to play FIFA and mm. your PS5 is gone. And you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Uh, yeah. Wait. I feel like selfishness brings a really big increase in crime rates and it's really bad. Like, it can be very problematic for people. 100%. Because, like, one of the many things that, like, lead to an increase in crime, I mean, obviously, apart from, like, um, financial circumstances and just everything else, there's also lack of self-control. So, and I think that empathy in itself is a way that you can control your own emotion and your own urge, um, urges. So then if you're thinking, um, if I do this, how is someone else going to react to how am I going to negatively impact somebody else? If you're thinking that, then you're going to want that PS5, which is going to be like, no, I don't want to ruin somebody's day because they're going to wake up and they say, I want to use my PS5. Oh no, where's my PS5? So, oh, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. And I think that it's also become like really normalized with Gen Z. Ziz, what do you think? Okay. So I think from what I've been seeing online in terms of Gen Z culture, there seems to be a rise in the sentiment that you don't owe anyone anything and just like this very hyper individualistic approach towards society and towards ourselves so people tend to center themselves as the main focus of their lives which of course is fine you know if it's your own life you should be able to prioritize yourself but i think it's being taken to an extreme length wherein people are now arguing arguing against basic concepts like being polite because they're like, oh, I don't owe anybody anything. Because, for example, um, let's say it's like polite or it's like uh, courtesy to leave the door open, hold the door open for someone if they're coming behind you. Mm. But so people may now take the individualistic approach and be like, well, I don't owe anyone anything, especially if it's a stranger. And I feel like that's when selfishness can become problematic because it really doesn't cost you much to, to have a more collective approach. Person. I 100% agree with that. I feel like now selflessness in itself has been associated with weakness. You know, like, oh, yeah. I'm not going to be a pushover, so I'm going to, like, stand oh, yeah. my ground and be, yeah. you know. Because when you're too selfless, people will be like, okay, Marla Kesh is so nice. Mm. I can just do whatever I want. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, people need to stop anticipating that, anticipating that people will start, you know, being mean to you because you're a decent person, you know. What happens, though? Yeah, it does. Anyways, I have a comment. Wait, it's actually a question. It says, you guys are doing so well. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I just have one question. If selfishness is all about putting yourself first, and we can now spin that to mean we are protecting ourselves in order to protect others by extension, then what even is selflessness? Yeah. That is a good one. Hmm. That's a good one. Hmm. I mean... No, you have to think of like a standard definition of selflessness. That's why you put other people first. Yeah. Hmm. Before yourself. So now that kind of like flips the table because now selflessness kind of seems kind of negative. Because you shouldn't always be putting other people first, right? Yeah, just like being selfish. I feel like selfish, self, selflessness <laughs> also has negative and positive yeah. aspects. It just mm -hmm. depends on what's the scenario, the situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no, oh, selfishness is good, selfishness is bad, selfishness, selfishness is, is, good, is good, selfishness is bad. It yeah. just depends on what's going on and how you react. Yeah, even though the society has made like, selflessness seem like good and selfishness seem exactly. bad. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> that's why I said it's a controversial topic. You can't really define it. Everything has its negative side, positive side. But I have another comment. Okay. This is actually a bit long. It says, Selfishness can be productive and problematic. Sometimes it is negatively about me, me all the time. But it can be productive if it is used in a positive way. For example, you cannot give what you do not have. If you do not love yourself enough, you cannot love someone else. Every true yes. action must begin with oneself. You must value yourself first to value others around you. My career is about me and not about my parents. My parents should guide me in my career path and not, de and not detect it for me because it, it's me who will live it out and not them. One of my friends told me that he married a woman he married for his parents because they wanted her that when the time comes, he will marry his own wife. Sanctus. Thank you. This is... Very insightful. And yeah. I 100% yeah. agree with that. There's so many aspects of our lives that we should have control over that we kind of forfeit that control 
want other people all in the act of being a good person you know yeah. feeling like oh i owe you this at least i owe you that at least i don't want you to feel like you've wasted your time and energy on me but these are things that we should decide ourselves yeah okay another comment mm-hmm. hello this is gloria from abelkuta and i believe that selfishness is productive or problematic depending on the situation taking the example of the exam selfishness is in fact productive because there's no use in putting yourself at a disadvantage just for the sake of helping others however this does not mean that selfishness is always productive selfishness is mainly considered as problematic when in everyday life such as being unwilling to help someone in need if you have the means to do so i mean yeah that's pretty standard yes yeah. mm-hmm. it's i think it's just we've reached like a glass half full kind of conclusion so it's like selfishness and selflessness can both be good or bad in the right amounts yeah. right but do you think that you should be more selfish or more selfless i feel like you should definitely be more selfless i think it depends on the situation hmm. like there's no standard answer there's no answer that oh i have to be more selfless i have to hmm. be more selfish it depends on what's going on and like what you're trying to do at that point in time but I remember I was talking to somebody this one time and they said that like when because when they put themselves first all the time sometimes at the disadvantage of others they kind of feel lighter they have less problems on their shoulders and they yeah, yeah. First. because like because like they just they're doing things for them and they don't have to care about what other people are thinking or or um I said I would do this today but I promise this person I'll do that or I have this and I have to give this to this person feeling like you don't owe anybody else and you're just living your life for you. It's like, it makes your life a lot easier. Yeah, your life will be a lot easier, mm-hmm. but that person's life will be a whole lot harder. Hmm. Wait, I feel like we need to redefine selflessness because I think we're placing it too much in the negative way. Right? Mm-hmm. And a quote I want to give under selflessness would be my favorite quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Mm-hmm. The okay. best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of other people. So I feel like being selfless doesn't necessarily mean hurting yourself by um, servicing other people. It, do, you, it doesn't necessarily say that you're hurting yourself. You're just putting other people first. You know, and it could yeah. sometimes like, make you feel really good about yourself as well. Yeah. So sorry, before we go on, we have a comment. So hello, ladies. This is Fumi from Lagos. Hi, Fumi. You're all doing a great job. Thank you very much. I like the way you are highlighting the positives and parasocial relationships. Oh, this was from yesterday. This was the topic from yesterday, actually. We were talking about selfishness being productive or productive. Okay, but I feel like we should still take it. This bottom line kind of applies to this. I'll advise that the Gen Z generation focus on the positives and always remember their own values. Yeah, that's just something good that you should all remember. Focus on the positives. Remember your values. So what do you think values, what impact do you think values play on whether your selfishness is positive or negative or your selflessness is to your advantage or to your disadvantage? I feel like having values will always put whatever you're doing at your mm-hmm. advantage. Yeah. Because when you have values, you kind of know yourself and you kind of the person you're trying to be. So if somebody tells you to do something that's outside your values you know that at least i have a strong will of mind mm. and at least i know that despite being selfish selfless i know who i am and yeah. i feel like that's just the best thing to have to have peace of mind sure. i feel like knowing speaking from my personal experience i am i can say that i'm a selfless person a lot of times that has been to my disadvantage even someone who's <laughs> um, yeah. a lot of times that has been to my disadvantage sometimes i give out a lot of energy a lot of time even my mom sometimes gets tired like i have my whole day planned like i said before i have my whole day plan and then one little thing and then my whole you know my whole day is messed up and sometimes i've used this term when i was talking to my sister about it i said i sometimes i feel like a side character in my own life feeling like you get to you give up so much of your own time your own personality just th- your own life for other people if you understand what i mean so you're constantly helping others you're constantly being there for this person being there for that person and you have no time to actually be there for yourself 
and also um, and, and that's the thing when we talk about selfishness and selflessness i don't want it to just be like a whole or oh, giving this person your food giving this person your pencil case or a pencil or a shop no no <laughs> like you need to, like it's giving aspect of yourself my i'm very selfless with my time as i said before so then when i yeah basically what do you guys think i resonate i feel like I can't be selfish. Mm. If I really need I can't be, but I'm more of a selfless person in terms of if you need me to do something for you, I will do it. I will do whatever I'm doing. I'll attend to you and I'll come back to me. And I've really been at those ends of when somebody's being selfish and I'm like, okay, I've been selfless. Please, mm. why aren't you? Like, Doing it too. Yeah. yeah. It's very disappointing. Quite frustrating, yeah. to be honest. But at the same, after all of that, I still feel like I'm still selfless. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah, I think I'm a very selfless person, but the only circumstance in which I might be selfish is if it actually like harms me. So me being selfless, yeah, if someone needs me to do something and like I'm doing something, I would definitely be able to go help someone else. Mm. But if this situation calls for me being hurt in any way to save someone else, I would definitely consider myself first as well. It really depends on the person because it's my family member then. <laughs> yeah. Ziz, so are you selfish or selfless? Okay, I think I'm, I'm someone that derives a lot of joy and pleasure from helping people. So for example, in the exam scenario that I gave, that's actually like a scenario that I've encountered like a couple times, even up to the moment where it's like five minutes before the exam and somebody is asking, oh, is what are we meant to study, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then sometimes you might think, this person is on serious, like, they should have studied earlier beforehand. Mm -hmm. But other times, I'm like, I could literally have, I literally have the power to potentially change this person's grade and then this person's trajectory, like, in this subject. And then so I derive a lot of pleasure from being able to help people and then see them progress in the area that I've helped them. So in that way, I would say that I'm selfless. But it obviously comes with the limits. There's a difference between being selfless and being a doormat. And there's a difference between being selfish and then being so self-absorbed and greedy to the point where you're a pain to be around. I 100% agree with that. Just another example from my personal experience. Um, you know, I even I saw this video because it kind of explained a lot of things I was going through. It was talking about how, like, sometimes you know when you're like the therapist friend and you yeah. listen and you devote lots of time and energy to the problems that your friends are going through, and you know, you sometimes you feel like you can't even what's called again, talk to them about it. So all you're doing is really just taking in the negative energy that they're releasing. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't listen to your friends talking, but then you do in begin to internalize this. And I've had this conversation with my mom as well. So for instance, let's say one of your friends is going through some kind of trouble. They're just really frustrated and you're the person they always come and vent to. Then you so you're going to notice that anger, even at that's their own specific situation that's exclusive to them, that anger might actually reflect onto you and you might just start snapping at the people around you. Yeah. I don't know if that's happened to you guys um, before. The opposite of the therapist friend, I'm the one that's doing the venting. <laughs> <laughs> so I really feel for... Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm. We'll continue shortly. We have a caller. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi. Okay. Good evening. Oh, is this, is this who <laughs> I think this is? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Good evening? Yeah, good evening. Hello? Okay. Can you hear us? Uh, uh, hello? Okay, yeah, we can hear you. Go on. Okay, I really love the program you guys are doing. So I think uh, sometimes it's good to be selfish and also sometimes it's good to be selfless. Hmm. So in the sense that you need to balance the two. Being selfish is not bad. Depends on the way you are being selfish. Like seriously, sometimes you need to put yourself first. Think about yourself first. Mm. Because when you are always thinking about people, thinking about people, those people are thinking about me, not they thinking about you. That's so sometimes you think about it for yourself first. At least maintain your boundary. Think of the things you do for yourself before you think of the things you do for others. Mm. Are you going to saying? Yes, we do. Yeah. So being selfless is not is not bad to render service to people. It's good to render service to people. But all together, when you are thinking about people, think about yourself first. That is just it. Hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's very deep. Thank you so Thank much. You. I want. I think that's some of everything we're talking about. Yeah. yeah.
please consider yourself as well. So Maraki, we're saying something before we got the phone call. Oh yeah, my me being the venting friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I just feel like oh, I'm just being very selfish because mm. everybody goes through their stuff. Yeah. So I always try and like chip in and be like, okay, how about you? What's going on with you? This scenario that you said it, but it's just something that a lot of us really need to put into consideration that. Yeah what we're doing, what we're saying, the way that we're venting, it may affect the other person. Exactly. And it may rub off on their lives. 100%. We um, have a comment in. Okay. So, hey ladies, you're all doing a great job dissecting this topic. I would like you all to imagine that 80% of humanity is selfish. What would the world look like? Um, like in everything in life, there has to be a balance. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. I completely agree. There has to be a good balance. balance. Yeah. So not more of yeah. selfishness, no more selflessness. Yeah. That's perfect. Um, we seem to have another comment. Okay. Good evening, my beautiful Gen Zs. I have been enjoying your program since you started on Monday. Thank you. Selflessness is good and sweet, but when you are being taken for granted, it's better that you are selfish once in a while. Hmm. Though not every time. I have been through the two a lot, but later realized that I was not much productive when I was selfless until I started being selfish no longer ago, and the beneficiaries of my selflessness were not finding it funny. Majority of them decided to stay away from me since I decided not to be a mother Christmas. <laughs> not to worry, I am more at peace now than before and has been advising to wise up. I love you all, Mr. Dinigi from my job. Thank you, Mr. Dinji. And I'm so glad that you are at peace and you have stopped being the Mother Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, yeah, 100%. The second you just stop putting yourself first and not taking, not becoming a dormant, as Susan puts it, you're going to feel a lot lighter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all of those people that are not finding it funny, I feel like when you start being selfless, it just brings to light who are really your true friends. Because mm. if you're a true friend, you really understand that, okay, she's been selfless all this time. So I'm going to be selfish it. to get peace of mind. Yeah. I feel like sometimes you need to learn when to put your emotions aside to attend to someone else's emotions. And let me give an example. So I have just said Yasmin about this situation before, but I was in a bit of a conflict with one of my cousins because they kept taking my snacks from my room and I was really <laughs> upset. Like I was really, really upset because that was my favorite <laughs> snack. And like, she just kept stealing it from me. So then I was not speaking to her. She came to me looking very sad. Me thinking she's trying to apologize to me. She comes to me venting about her problems and how she's been feeling very sad. I was stuck between whether to shout at her, tell her, why are you coming to tell me? I'm literally angry at you. But then I, of course, she's family. I had to put my emotions aside and attend to her problems and absolutely forgetting that she stole all my sky flakes <laughs> and of course being selfless enough to help her so yeah no yeah but on that note can we actually talk about this is it selfish when you have done something wrong to somebody and somebody is calling you out in a very calm manner and you just start breaking down and crying and making it seem like they are the villain yes <laughs> is that not selfish <laughs> I yeah. feel this is, I've been in a lot of scenarios where <laughs> I'll call somebody else and they'll be like, oh, but so, 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 like, everybody has oh, an excuse for a reason behind everything that they do. Exactly. And I understand that. I don't see stuff as excuses. I see as, okay, this has happened. There's a reason. But at the same time, you need to also acknowledge when you've done something wrong. Exactly. I will, as long as you're my friend, I'll always be there for you and I'll always listen. I'll say what I need to say. I'll tell you stuff. But it's all you're wrong. Say you're wrong. Say you're wrong. That is true. And you don't have to be the victim of every yeah, situation. Be selfless. Yeah. Choose peace. <laughs> that is another quote of the day. Choose peace. So yeah, I think now we've just seen so many ways in which you could be both selfish and selfless. Yeah. So you... Wait, we haven't even... Apart from the crime, we haven't looked that deeply into the negative effects of being selfish. We do not want to encourage selfishness. We, sure. <laughs> we also need yes. to acknowledge, um, I guess, differentiating between selfishness and putting yourself first. So sometimes you could be, I don't know, you could just lose the trust of the people around you. For instance, if we have talked about how, um, what's called again, not listening to the friends that have always been there for you can be considered selfish. 
you need to also take into account how you could be affecting them and the baggage that you're unloading onto them mm -hmm. and onto their lifestyles because you could just see somebody that has been smiling every day somebody that usually seems so happy all of a sudden starts seeming sad and you're like ah oh, what's the problem but you don't know that you are the problem <laughs> <laughs> it's you that has actually caused it so it's all about empathy it all dials down to empathy yeah. i think that's what really draws the line between both you can be selfish and you can protect your peace and you are 100% allowed to confide in your friends and your family members. But please remember that while you can care about them and see them as your support system, you also need to remember that they're human beings as well. And we interact with each other and we internalize the things that we constantly hear and we absorb each other's energies. You know, bad energy, it's, it passes around. We need to protect our energy. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. But do you guys have any more to say on the topic? Yeah, I think another negative effect of selfishness, it could lead to loneliness. Because, yeah. for example, my cousin being selfish in that situation and not coming to the, um, not realizing that what she did to me was wrong, instead of just dumping her own problems on top of, like, I feel like if I had been the bad cousin and decided not to help her out, she could have felt very lonely in that moment. Yeah. So I feel like that's another negative effect of being selfish. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. like, selfishness, like, really pushes people away. Mm. If you think about because nobody wants to be around the selfish person. Nobody wants to be friends with the selfish person. Okay. So, so we got one more comment. It says, hi, BTs. You guys are so smart. Being selfishness, but wait, being selfish, I'm <laughs> so sorry. Being selfish, <laughs> I'm not going to hear the end of this. Being selfish can make you have trust issues. That's the negative aspect of it. I love you all. We love you too. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling, commenting, and interacting today. And thank you to my lovely co anchors, Salma, Merleke, and Izine. Um, yeah, this has been a lovely conversation. Remember to like share comment and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us if you missed today's quote here it is again there's a difference between people who care about themselves and people who only care about themselves see you again tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen thank you thanks guys <laughs>